Okay, so just over a year ago, Microsoft announced the Surface Pro 3, a hybrid between a laptop and a tablet. It was a device designed to compete with the MacBook. And I'll say it now, the Surface Pro 3 is a beautiful device. But should you buy one? Straight out of the box, you get the Surface Pro 3 itself, a pen with no pen holder, and a power pack. It doesn't come with a type cover, and if you're planning on using the Surface like a normal laptop, you'll need to get one. You can get it in four different color options, but you'll need to factor in $130 for the type cover on top of whatever Surface you're thinking of purchasing. Still cheaper than some other keyboard covers out there. <coughs> there are six models to choose from, all at various price points. In this review, I'm using the i5 model with a 256GB SSD. The Surface feels sturdy as you'd expect with the magnesium shell, and from a design perspective, the Surface Pro 3 is a hefty feat. The power button is located on the top left of the Surface. It's an easy reach. The fan grills are visible across the top as well, but this is no surprise considering the amount of power Microsoft have crammed into such a thin package. Microsoft claimed you won't hear the fan or even notice any heat output from the device, and for the most part you won't, but if you try running any intensive programs or games, you're going to find the fans start booting up, and you're definitely going to feel that heat from the rear. To the right of the surface is a mini display port, one USB port, and the magnetic and reversible power connection. It's easy to get the power connector in and out of the surface, although I would have liked a longer power cable. The power pack features a USB port for charging any USB compatible devices. It's a nice touch. The stand is the pinnacle of what makes the surface a hybrid. It's refined from previous models and there's a new hinge, now with more granular control compared to its predecessor. The surface stands in an upright position and it can be moved all the way down to 130 degrees. It is worth noting though that in the upright position the surface isn't the most stable. It's quite top heavy. Hidden under the stand is a micro SD card slot. It's a real bummer it's not a full size SD card slot though. On the bottom is where the type cover connects. It's held together by a surprisingly strong magnet. The type cover turns the otherwise tablet into a wannabe laptop. The touchpad is better than previous versions, but it's still pretty meh. Two handed use is nearly impossible and there isn't much room for travel. It's an average touchpad that it, it works. The keyboard on the other hand, it's a whole other ball game. The keys feel satisfying to use, spacing is on point, and bonus, it's backlit. There's five modes of brightness, including turning the backlighting off. Each brightness level has a relatively even spread as well. You can lie the type cover flat on a table, or fold the cover slightly towards the screen to give the keyboard an angle and make it more comfortable for lap usage. The elevated angle brings the keyboard flush with the bottom of the screen. This does make it pretty hard to use the taskbar with your fingers though. And you're going to be doing quite a lot of that considering the touchpad we talked about earlier. The back of the type cover is made of a suede-like material. When the surface is closed and you are carrying it around is when you can fully appreciate the material choice from Microsoft. The back looks exceptional and the feel in the hand is top notch. This leaves the right side with a reasonably tactile volume rocker and a 3.5mm audio jack. The screen is very sharp at 2160 by 1440 pixels with a 3x2 aspect ratio and makes working on the surface easier and the touchscreen is pretty responsive and easy to use. That is, when it works. I had some issues with the touchscreen not accepting any input from my fingers. I found out the panel is made from Sony though, and there is some software on their website to fix it. I'll link this in the description below so you guys can take a look at it if you've ever had the same issue. This isn't on Microsoft's website though. You'll find some backlight bleed from the corners, but this isn't really noticeable in day-to-day -day use, and you're only going to really find this an issue when you're looking at a completely black screen. Overall, I really enjoyed viewing content on the Surface. In tablet mode, the Surface Pro 3 is on the bigger end of the scale. I enjoyed having the additional screen real estate for media consumption though, and on top of that, with that screen size, it makes for a pretty usable on-screen keyboard. Windows 10, it's a welcome addition to the Surface Pro 3. It's fixed issues with DPI scaling, there's no more annoying Metro apps, and now you can easily organize your programs. But as with any new operating system, there is bugs. When putting the Surface to sleep, I've returned to a battery drained, hot, and not doing much Surface Pro 3. I never had any of these issues with Windows 8.1, so hopefully this gets fixed soon by Microsoft. The Surface Pro 3 handles light gaming, but don't expect to play any serious titles. When trying to play around with Dota, the Surface overheated and shut down. But what can you expect from such a thin package? Microsoft bundled a pen with the Surface, but they gave no elegant way to attach it. Microsoft tells you to use the magnetic strip used for the power. Really Microsoft? Well, you can throw a type cover on it and use their attached pen holder. <laughs> Again, really? It makes the surface feel cheap, and it detracts from the otherwise superb design and looks. The pen has three buttons, 
one on the top to open OneNote, or double click it to take a screenshot, and two on the side acting as left and right mouse buttons. The pen feels comfortable in the hand, and it definitely has its uses, although I seldom used it myself. The speakers are front firing to give you a more immersive feel. They don't get very loud though, and even on the louder setting they distort a little. In a quiet area they do work well though. Okay, so battery. Microsoft claims 9 hours of it. I'm still yet to see more than 5 hours of solid use though, and while we're browsing I'll get an average of 4-5 to five hours. But if I'm doing any meaningful work, that time is cut down to 3. The red camera, it's okay, it's 5 megapixels, it's there, it takes pictures, but you should never rely on it as your sole device for capturing moments. The same goes for video quality. So the front facing camera, it's adequate for voice calling, and it's definitely better than some other devices out there. The same goes for the microphone as well, although I would advise using a headset. It will save yourself repeating the same sentence twice, especially in a noisy area. When making anything a hybrid, there's always going to be some drawbacks. One of these drawbacks is using the surface like you would a laptop, on your lap funny enough. Due to the stand and top heavy surface, I now require more of my lap to even use the surface. This makes typing pretty awkward at times. With a traditional laptop, I could get away with far less of my lap space. In conclusion, the Surface Pro 3 is a great option for people looking for an ultra-portable device with pretty reasonable power. That is, if you don't mind a few compromises. Some people are going to prefer a traditional laptop over the Surface, and that's okay, Surface isn't for everyone. The Surface Pro 3 though has brought the hybrid game up to scratch and found its place in the market. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys' experiences have been with the Surface Pro 3, or even if you're looking at buying one, I'm keen to hear what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching guys, and be sure to subscribe. This has been Tim O'Neill.